Maybe you see power lines everywhere you go, or maybe you're like the rest of us and you don't usually register them. Kind of like how your brain ignores the side of your nose unless you think about it. Sorry. Like noses, power lines are ubiquitous, but often ignored. Still, they provide the electricity that we use every day for indoor lighting, to heat or cool down our homes, to make coffee, and so much more. But not all power lines are created equal. There are actually two types of electricity that they transmit. There is high voltage AC, and then there's high voltage DC, or HVDC for short. Power lines that transmit HVDC are the more efficient of the two and proliferating the world with HVDC power lines can make a huge impact on reducing our carbon footprint as a whole. But first, let's take a step back. Whoa, not that far back. What comes before we can determine the efficiency of an electrical cable? Well, first we have to consider line losses. Line losses are the source of voltage drop along power lines. There are three major types of line losses. There's resistive, capacitive, and inductive. AC power suffers from all three of these line losses, while DC power only suffers from resistive power losses, and even then only suffers from certain types of resistive power losses. Regardless of this, lots of people still assume that AC power is more efficient to transmit than DC power. Let's talk about where this myth came from and then bust it wide open. Basically, DC power is more often associated with being transmitted at lower voltages. When something has a lower voltage, it also has a higher current, according to the formula for power. And a higher current produces more heat when traveling down a cable. So when you consider that heat is actually a form of energy lost, you can see why people would assume that DC power is less efficient. In actuality, when AC is transmitted at lower voltages, it suffers these same line losses that DC power suffers, and then some. Let's go over the first type of power loss, the type that both AC and DC are affected by. Resistive power loss is when electrical power is lost due to the resistance of a conductor, like a power line. There are no perfect conductors except for superconductors, but aside from those, they all have a little bit of electrical resistance. And when electricity meets any resistance, power is converted into thermal power or heat, and this loss of energy in the form of heat is what causes voltages on conductors like power lines to drop, especially over long distances. Next, let's talk about capacitive losses. Capacitive losses only occur in AC circuits, not DC circuits, and are a type of reactive power loss. If you've seen our video on power factor, then you have a pretty good idea of what reactive power losses are. Or maybe you just know because you know. Every electrical cable has a parasitic capacitance with the Earth. Parasitic means something unwanted, like a parasite. As for capacitance, Capacitance occurs when two conductors are close enough together that they store energy in an electric field. In the case of power lines, capacitance occurs between the earth and power lines, because these are both two conductors. That's actually why power lines need to be so high above the ground. The higher they are, the less capacitive losses they incur. This is because they're not reacting with the earth as much. Capacitive effects don't occur in DC circuits because the voltage of a DC circuit is steady. So it doesn't really lose energy to parasitic capacitance generated by the earth and power lines, which are our two conductors. Inductive line losses are the third type of line loss experienced by AC circuits, including power lines. Inductive losses are essentially power losses that occur when a magnetic field is built up and collapsed repeatedly on a wire. When AC power alternates, it charges up a parasitic inductor, which is created by a wire. This creates a magnetic field that collapses and changes direction repeatedly. An inductor is an electrical component that stores energy in a magnetic field. Because a power line creates a parasitic inductance, it happens to store some energy in its magnetic field, even though it would be better if that energy were transmitted for distribution to buildings. This means that a power line basically creates an unwanted inductor or parasitic inductor. This parasitic inductor is charged up and down repeatedly because of the alternating nature of the electromagnetic field generated by AC power. Direct current or DC power doesn't have an alternating frequency like we covered before. So its voltage is steady and this means that it doesn't charge up and down repeatedly. This is unlike AC power and so it doesn't incur inductive power losses. All things considered, this makes the flow of DC power through electrical cables more efficient than the flow of power through AC electrical cables. This increased efficiency means that the carbon footprint of high voltage DC power transmission is smaller than the carbon footprint of high voltage AC power transmission, at least in the sense of line losses. 
Power lines actually lose about 5-10% to if they transmit AC power, while in HVDC or high voltage direct current power systems, they only lose about 2-3% to of energy along cables. So when we compare AC and DC power at the same voltage, DC power wins every time by losing less energy. Whereas AC power loses the same energy that DC power would lose, and then some. AC power is still used today because it's compatible with transformers and this makes the infrastructure for AC transmission systems cheaper. If you'd like to learn more about this, we have a blog topic all about it, so just check out the link in the comments and you can see it on our website. I'm Erin from Argentum, if you would like to see more content like this, hit the like and subscribe button and I will see you in the next one.